to the world premiere of the new film by Xavier Dolan, The Death and Life of John F. Donovan. Uh, it has made a number of very impressive, highly acclaimed films in a short time and at a young age. But he's not a great filmmaker because he's young. He's a great filmmaker because he speaks the language of cinema. When you watch a Xavier Dolan film, when you're actually immersed in a Xavier Dolan film, because it, it feels like that, you're immersed in what the great artist in film can do with movement and time and color and light and performance and all of the things that make movies magical for us. Uh, he has mastered uh, the language of cinema at an early age, but I think that's because he grew up in it. And in addition to that, he makes films truly from the heart. These are personal films about what moves him, what uh, shakes him, and the emotion that he wants to convey to us. And when we first saw this film, I was deeply moved by it. I was impressed by the craft, the art, the cinema in it, but I was especially impressed that someone could open themselves, open their heart uh, to such a degree to a public audience and, and share uh, his own obsessions and his own passions. Uh, it remains to me something that I stand in awe of. I think all great artists do this, and we have a great artist right here to introduce this film to you. Please join me in welcoming the writer and director of The Death and Life of John F. Donovan, Xavier Dolan. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Cameron, for these words, and thank you for having me, having us. Uh, thank you to Tiff uh, for this beautiful invitation, um, and thank you to all the people in uh, in this room uh, who've gathered uh, tonight. I appreciate your uh, your presence. Thank you. Um, since these uh, introductions are always about talking about this film at all, and uh, I, I have brought something with me uh, that I think will speak uh, about the film for itself and um, tell you exactly what this, what this film is about. Um, it, is, it is a letter. <laughs> Sorry, it's loud. It is a letter. Uh, a copy of, uh, of a letter. A letter I once, uh, I once sent to someone I really admired and whose work and performances uh, made me aware that there was such a thing as acting in movies and filmmaking beyond what we imagine as children. Uh, some of you may have heard about <laughs> this letter or even maybe read it, but here it is still. <laughs> Hi, Leonardo. <laughs> My name is Xavier Dolan Tadros. I go to school. I love school. I am eight years old. March 20th, I'll be nine. I'm one of your fans. I watched the movie Titanic five times. Note, this was two weeks after the release. <laughs> you play very well. You know, assume I meant act. Um, you are a great actor and I admire you. I'm an actor too. I've done a few commercials for a very known drugstore chain. <laughs> and I had some good roles in four movies in French. I wish that I could play in one of your movies once. Again, I see my meant one day. I know that you will come to Montreal one day. Montreal is a very popular site for filming. When you'll come in Montreal to shoot a movie, I will for sure be passing the auditions in case you need a young boy in the cast. Dear Leonardo, I hope sincerely that you will answer my letter. Xavier Dolantanos. So that's it for that, really. Um, why not? <laughs> no, but, so, this letter, along with many other similar letters, uh, were sent throughout my childhood to um, actors and actresses, singers I loved and whose work changed me and inspired me and, uh, and gave me hope that I too could one day make it in, in, into this business. And during these years, I fanboyed over 
TV shows on the WB channel, recording them to watch them again and again and again, ripping them through the satellite TV I was paid for with my job, actor savings. I worshipped films like uh, Home Alone, and of course Titanic, Jumanji, Little Princess, X-Men, Batman Returns, as I've so often discussed. Until the age of 15, they were what I knew about film and TV. And I realize now that all these years, I, I thought I related to these films and shows that I did somehow, but never entirely, because there was never anyone I could ultimately relate to in terms of, uh, well, sexual identity. And to segue now uh, into this film, it is deep down what I dreamed of when first wanting to make the death and life of John Donovan. A film that would homage the great commercial successes and stories from my childhood, but a film, however, which, if I were to see it back when I was 10, I would enjoy as much as all the films I told you about, but with, in it, a message of hope for the young boy that I was, a message of a possibility through representation of my own sexuality. Because then, I think I would have thought, if someone like Jon Snow can be gay, <laughs> then I'll be all right. <laughs> so, enjoy the film, and thank you for being here tonight. I appreciate your presence. Thank you. If you could, please welcome to the cast, Emily Hampshire, Chris Zelka, No, you can, we'll, we'll do that too, but um, I'll sign the copy of Mommy with pleasure. Um, but, um, so, yeah, I guess I see myself in, in, in the character of Rupert more because as opposed to John, I don't, I, I don't feel that I'm hiding myself, that I'm, I mean, that I'm hiding the truth. I'm, I'm true to myself and uh, I mean, I, I've been out for a long time, but also, in the films that I make and in the stories that I tell, I try to be, I try to speak my mind and, and, and write and shoot with, with the heart and, and I don't feel that, that I've concealed anything or kept anything from anyone. Uh, whereas for Rupert, he, of course I see myself in, in him, well, I've, you know, I spend my childhood writing letters to uh, actors. Funnily enough, now that I'm an adult, an adult, I still write letters to actors, but for different reasons. <laughs> um, 
but um, and so of course I, I see myself in this in this young admirer who screams in front of his TV shows and uh, and identifies to uh, or tries to identify to to these characters, uh, and um, yeah, uh, that's it. The notion of of I guess admiring someone so much and wishing that you would be a part of another world, a part of a world, a business, an industry, an art form. Uh, I can relate to that much more than escaping the truth. And, 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 and of course, I've, there are common points between John F. Donovan and, and me and myself. Um, but I just feel free. So I don't think of myself as a John of Donovan. I think of myself as Rupert, as a dreamer, which doesn't mean that John isn't a dreamer, but anyway, I think you, you understand. <laughs> the point of the movie for, for, the, uh, for the gentleman is, that, uh, that is to be yourself, be who you are. Do you guys want to talk about uh, uh, how you guys stay true to yourself when you're, when you're performing? Well, it's actually interesting because this movie originally, like a long time ago, was kind of inspired by a book called Letters to a Young Poet. And that's the way I remember when I read that book. Um, I think that's just the best book on being an artist and staying true to yourself. And um, so anytime anybody asks me about acting advice, I'm like, read that book. That um, It's not an acting book, but it's about being an artist. and. It's just really uh, related to this movie. I think I am. Uh, no, no, I want you to use mine, though. <laughs> my fiance is a DJ, and every time I touch the mic, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, brother, thank you so much, and thank you, Xavier. Um, I think it's all about, in my opinion, it's about keeping your naivete. It's about keeping that childlike substance inside you. That um, it's okay to make mistakes. There is gonna be another day. There's gonna be another opportunity to, so just try to stay naive. There's nothing wrong with being naive. It just helps you learn. It helps you be a listener instead of a talker. Actors are really lucky because we get to play for a living. And if you can not worry too much about getting validation from outside, it can really be a fabulous way to stay awake in your life. But I think everybody here is striving all the time to be authentic. And whether it's um, pressure from your parents or pressure, economic pressure, it's very, very hard and something that I think you spend your whole life trying to be is an authentic person and is finding a passion and doing something that every, every job that you get that you pull yourself, put yourself fully into. And no matter what your job is, when you take pride in it and when you do it really well, then it becomes an extension of who you are. And that, with kindness, I think are the two things that I try to get my kids to you know, be aware of. So I think actors, it's a more obvious thing because we're playing so many different people that maybe you can, uh, and everybody's watching you all the time and talking about you all the time, like the pressures that are in this movie, uh, so that you can make the mistake of looking at yourself from outside instead of inside. But I think everyone has that, that journey to make of trying to be an authentic, person, and, um, and that's what your job is, as you are lucky enough to stay alive and spend every day, you know, doing something or connecting with people or making people happy, and we're just really, really fortunate to be able to do what we do and have a collaboration and uh, maybe give you guys a chance in a darkened theater to feel something. I think it's, uh, it's part of what 
this movie is about is a young man who's who's lost his who he is authentically and, and is lost in himself and and through the movie and at the end of the movie hopefully <coughs> you saw he he finds some of his truth again before tragically losing his life. Um, I think it's a it's a hazardous business being an actor. Um, it's a hazardous business being an unemployed actor. <laughs> and it's a really hazardous business being a successful actor. Like, you're putting yourself on the line a lot in both cases and uh, asking for acceptance all the time and wanting to be accepted. And I've found that very hard in the past. And I've played a character in this who I think finds it incredibly difficult. Um, for me, it's always down to who you surround yourself with. You always surround yourself with supportive people and people who aren't going to lie to you. Um, and you'll, you'll find the right truth for you, I guess. We love you, kids! Oh. <laughs> um, I was, your, your question, your um, query, um, I, it took me a moment actually to sort of try and think about how I would answer because it was a very, I had a very, I felt it was a, I had a very painful reaction to what you just said in terms of authenticity because it's been something that has been incredibly difficult for me as a, God, as an ethnic minority, person of colour, whatever the fuck you want to call it. <laughs> um, and there is no way of defining me. Um, and I think that one of the things that I discovered as an actress was that by playing these different roles, I mean, each one so different that there was no way of defining me. And here I was changing like a chameleon from one role to the next. And I felt so safe in those places when I was on set or on stage or whatever. I felt free. And then I'd go back to my life and just feel like a piece of shit without any identity. <laughs> And it just didn't make any sense. But I realise now, and one of the things that I think the movie deals with is that John F. Donovan feels this incredible safety in, in the character that he plays. He feels, you know, he feels more safe in that in a way than in his own life. And there's a real truth to that because our culture doesn't, our society doesn't always allow us to be free. We have to, to sit inside these pigeonholes. Um, so in terms of authenticity, I just think to always remember that you have value, true value, and that your contributions, whether it's to a director or as you're reading a script, is to always remember that you have value and never to forget that in whatever situation that you're in. And I genuinely, with all my heart, hope that you never lose sight of that. Um, and always remember that wherever you are and however lost you feel, we've all felt that. I think we're going to have to end it on that, but uh, thank you guys for coming, thanks for the questions, and congratulations! Film screens again, please tell thank your you. friends!